all 31 Super Motocross World Championship events can be streamed domestically. That's here in the U.S. on Peacock. So to subscribe, go to PeacockTV.com slash sports slash Super Motocross. And for the fans of Super Motocross, they'll have a chance to watch it all year long on Peacock, NBC, and USA Network. It's time for our big interview. Let's welcome in NBC Sports Lee Diffie. He'll be making the call this weekend from Anaheim in the booth and talk Anaheim 1. Okay, welcome to the show, Lee. Awesome to have you on SMX Insider. Look, you've announced some of the biggest sporting events in the world, literally, but just talk about what that atmosphere is like at sold-out Angel Stadium, Anaheim 1 Supercross every year. Well, I think, Jason, for any sport, we, you know, as sports fans, uh, we get excited about the start of any new season. It could be the NFL season. It could be Major League Baseball. But, you know, in the motorsport sphere, um, there's nothing quite like A1. And, you know, the, just the, the anticipation of looking forward to something. So we've, we're, we're the, it's the human nature, right? We always want to look forward to something. So we've got through the holidays. We were looking forward to Thanksgiving and Christmas or Hanukkah and New Year's. Well, now we've got A1 to look forward to. And, and then when it finally comes, there's almost a surreal feeling about it. And then, you know, because the, the Angel Stadium is packed, everybody, we all share that same enthusiasm for the gate to drop and to, to get the season going. But especially this season, with it being the inaugural round of the Super Motocross World Championships. So I can't wait. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, a lot of those atmospheric terms are, are overused. So... I'm kind of uh, grappling to grab something right now that's appropriate, but it's just, it's so special. It's just a, um, you know, across the sporting sphere, it's truly special to be there, to be a part of it and just to witness it. Lee, as you come into a championship, there's so many storylines. Every rider has his own, but for you individually, what's the big story that's intriguing you that you want to see play out in 2023? Well, I think if you start in the 450 class, I want to see where Eli Tomac's at because he seems to be, you know, how, how could he go any higher? How could he be in any more special a spot considering what he achieved last year? Switching teams, switching manufacturers and doing what he did by, by winning the double, winning, you know, the Supercross, the Monster Energy Supercross season and, and the Pro Motocross season. So it can't get any better. So he's kind of racing against himself. What does that look like? What does the Cooper uh, Webb redemption season look like? Um, and then in 250s, and, and I'll, I'll start with the West because uh, Jet Lawrence is, is such a, um, a humble young man. He knows that there's nobody else out there that can beat him, so he can only beat himself, right? So where does he set that bar? What, what does that look like for him in certainly the first 17 races of this Super Motocross World Championship, specifically for Supercross, um, to back up his title wins last year? What does it look like? Does he try and go for that you know, elusive, perfect season? So I think there's, you know, we're spoiled. Wherever you look, there's amazing storylines. So they're, they're a couple for me. When you look at a championship in a whole, there's chapters, right? And, and the first big chapter is the California races in the month of January. And then we move east and things start to shift a little bit. Is there any riders that you think in the month of January need to really make an impression outside of, of course, Cooper Webb and Eli Tomac, but another rider that needs a strong January just to get things on the right track in 2023? Uh, yeah, for sure. Chase Sexton. I think consistency is going to be a word that's not only appropriate for him, but it's appropriate for everybody. I'm really intrigued as to what the riders, the racers' mindsets are going to be because, you know, they're all used to starting at A1, the, the, the traditional and typical starting point. Um, but what, what is their mindset going into now this new phase of the sport? Do you just think about getting through the Monster Energy Supercross season or are you season-long mindset? And are you thinking about those three playoff rounds at the end, you know, to be, to have a chance of being an inaugural Super Motocross World Champion? Half a million dollars on the line for the 250 winner, a million dollars on the line for the 450 winner. So what's your mindset? And to your point, Daniel, is it your mindset of just getting through January and having a real solid foundation to build on? For season long, are you going to compartmentalize this season? I think there are a lot of topics uh, that we're going to talk about for a long time, for over 10 months. And one of the riders, Lee, that always starts the season strong is Ken Roxon. The long game has traditionally been his problem in trying to bring the Monster Energy Supercross Championship home. But there's been so much talk of a bit of a redemption story of his own, getting back on his old brand. So what do you think about Ken Roxon in this reuniting with Suzuki, the bike they used to win a lot of races on? Look, Jason, you guys have discussed this over the, over the past few weeks on this show in that, 
Um, Ken Roxon has been one of the most interesting off-season stories. And maybe, just maybe, this new, relaxed, seemingly lack of pressure or less pressure on him is going to yield the result that we have all wanted to see, you know, in the Monster Energy Supercross 450 Championship. And then maybe in this, you know, 10-month-long inaugural season of Super Motocross. So maybe because he's not a factory Honda rider anymore, maybe, maybe because... I think maybe less people are asking that question about the the elusive championship in Supercross anyway. Um, Maybe that's going to put him in a more relaxed frame of mind and carry his off-season fun, because he seems to have had a lot of fun, and carry that through into the racing season. Are any of us going to be surprised if he wins in A1? No, might be a surprise on that bike, but no, we won't be surprised. But what does the whole season look like for him? And, you know, I I think this format could suit him really, really well. You don't have to win every race. You don't have to win every week. You just got to be there for those last three playoff rounds where, you know, the points, as we've spoken about, single points, double points, triple points, just be there. And and that might work out really well for Roxon. Yeah, if Ken Roxon is healthy and ready come the fall, betting against him in a three-round world championship uh, might be foolish. All right, Lee, we're excited. Anaheim 1's coming up. We'll see you Saturday night. Thanks for joining us on SMX Insider. Let's go. Thanks, guys. Can't wait.